Hi guys, in this episode of State of the Weather Address, we're talking about a storm system, a potentially big one that's going to track up through the central and eastern United States after around October 20th. That's what we're going to talk about. We're going to talk about intensity, timing, precipitation, snowfall potential, and stuff like that. But before we begin, hit that subscribe button if you like daily forecast updates, long-range stuff, stuff you don't get on TV and extreme weather events and hit those bell notifications because we do go live and then comment something below i don't care what just comment something below get a conversation going so right now this is the first thing we're going to look at is the upper levels these are the 500 millibar height anomalies and you see this blue just trough right here that's what we're talking about right now we're talking about a potential storm these storm systems usually form just ahead of these troughs this is for october 21st around uh well i'd say the 22nd but at 1 a.m early in the morning and uh you don't want to watch this thing because we've got some ridges out west ridges out east nice deep trough in the central u.s this could create a powerful low pressure system near and ahead of it now you know as we get towards the 23rd the pattern really starts to change you get more troughing up there troughing over here you're going to start to see an active pattern that sets up across the central and eastern United States as you head towards later in October. And I've been saying this for a couple of weeks now, uh, you know, and, and this is really starting to show it. And this might actually track into the east coast. So there it is right there on the 25th. This is another trough that comes down, and you're going to get a very powerful storm system potentially late month uh, in the east coast. But we're going to talk about the storm system around the October 20th through the 22nd for now. This is what the National Weather Service has. They have a low pressure system out here in western Kansas on the 20th at around uh, noon. Got a nice warm front here, dry line surface trough down there, and a cold front behind there. There's going to potentially be some snowfall on the back side of this thing very early. You know, it's been flipping back and forth. Potentially some snowfall in Colorado, maybe western Nebraska, and also a slight chance up here as well. And, in uh, uh, Minnesota, Wisconsin, and Michigan. Again, slight at the moment, but it's definitely something we want to watch. Now, this system could be potentially powerful enough, and there's been a lot of warm air out ahead of this thing for quite a while, where you could get some uh, moisture for some severe storms somewhere in the plains, the eastern parts of the plains, maybe uh, farther east into uh, you know, the, uh, south of the Ohio Valley, maybe towards Tennessee or so. We're going to have to definitely watch that. But that's uh, the 20th. And then as, you go, uh, as we look at the upper levels, this is the vorticity of the atmosphere. Very nice you know, little uh, trough digging in here. The thing we want to watch for is this thing right here. There's almost two little waves. And they're going to kind of compete with each other, which could inhibit the storm potential. The European computer model does not show this, but the GFS does. Now here's the GFS for the 20th. This is our uh, composite reflectivity, so it's kind of like the future radar. Plenty of moisture coming up out of the Gulf, streaming north uh, for the east half of the United States. Nice high pressure out here, as you see under that ridging that I was talking about, and a high pressure over here. This really, this storm, if it wants to congeal together, it could be a really powerful one with these two highs separated, uh, you know, or a high is separated and the low pressure right in between them. I mean, this low pressure system can be very, very strong if it does come together. You can see some snow in the backside in western Nebraska, and probably some thunderstorms and rain on the east side in the warm sector. Now watch what happens uh, as we, uh, we'll look at the severe weather potential real quick and then we'll fast forward it. Here's your jet stream, or just below the jet at 500 millibars. Plenty of flow for severe weather. This is gonna help push the precipitation away from the thunderstorm updraft which could create severe storms probably in the eastern plains maybe a little bit further east so definitely uh, good there's lots of upper level support either way for a nice low pressure system now there's actually some decent moisture that comes up i mean look at this 60 dews now as we head in towards late october pretty crazy all the way up to nebraska you can see that warm front that uh, you know, kind of surface trough dry line and then a cold front farther back. There could be some storms up here in northeast Kansas all the way down to maybe the uh, maybe north central Texas, the way this looks with those copious amounts of moisture. And then you look at the instability. This is a necessary ingredient for severe weather, and we got that. Got a little bit. We know about 750. We got about 1,000 right there. So 
probably marginal, but maybe just enough to pop off a few severe storms. And with that wind shear that we had, that upper level support could see some supercells and maybe an isolated tornado or two. Supercell composite, pretty low, but in some areas it's approaching one, which is high enough for supercell. Energy helicity index is kind of measures the spin in the lower levels of the thunderstorm, the zero to three k kilometer, there's low levels of the atmosphere, and you have a little bit of this. All you really need is a one plus for elevated tornado potential and you got that like i said northeast kansas and also down here in oklahoma i think those are your highest areas again this is kind of far out tornado potential is best the day of it's kind of hard to predict this a day or more in advance but we're definitely looking for an elevated potential for tornadoes i would say somewhere in that green area right there there is some indication that this could be further east with uh how things are evolving but Definitely something to watch. And you can see the sounding here. This is uh, indicating marginal tornado potential. And uh, got some directional shear, got some shear, and a little bit of instability as well. We'll have a sounding tutorial one of these days. But uh, that sounding does look decent. All right, so as we head towards the 21st now, you know, 1 a.m. here, you can see this two waves that start branching off. This could inhibit the low pressure system's strength. You got two different branches, almost another one up here. And uh, that's gonna kind of spread out and diffuse the low pressure system according to the GFS. The European computer model does not show that. This is what the uh, National Weather Service is thinking. Nice cold front, large cold front. And you're about to see this thing blow up as, we, as it hits towards the east coast. And this is really cool. And I'll show you that in a second. But uh, nonetheless, decent low pressure system. Probably some uh, cold rain on the backside. Maybe some snow, if they're, uh, you know, if it gets uh, strong enough. This is not strong enough, according to the WPC. This is the GFS. You can see uh, like a cold front kind of right along there. Your rain and thunderstorms out ahead of it. Again, there's going to be some pockets of instability. There's going to be isolated storms that reach severe potential. Maybe as far east as Tennessee. Again, the planes with the uh, potential as well. You can see the thickness gradients. This is kind of the average temperature in the column of the atmosphere really decrease. So the lower numbers are the, are, uh, are colder typically, and you can see that 540 line. So that's your uh, near freezing line, and uh, it's getting very close to the precipitation shield. So as this low moves north, and as it strengthens, which it might, it's going to drag cold air into its low pressure center. And that 540 line could move south and give people in Minnesota and Wisconsin a slight chance of some wraparound snow. And how strong does that get? We'll see. It looks more likely for Canada, but it is very interesting to watch. And you got your classic two high pressure systems, one on the east and one on the west. This could really support this low. And as we head towards... Uh, Actually, this is the European computer model. This was actually the 21st, and as you can see, it's it's a lot stronger. And uh, we'll um, we'll see another image of that in a second. This is the 21st. Okay, so this is the 21st, and you can see those branches of this of the storm system kind of separated still. But you're going to see some interesting change as we uh, head towards the 22nd. Still plenty of moisture. There's your low pressure system. Cold front kind of sagging behind plenty of moisture out ahead of it going to be lots of rain uh, for the east half of the united states but as we head towards we'll look at the temperatures real quick and yeah temperature is going to be pretty warm out ahead of this thing it's going to draw up a lot of warm air from the gulf with that ridging you got probably 5 to 15 degrees above average for the east coast but behind this thing there's going to be a nice plunge of cold air in the central and maybe in parts of the western u.s about five to ten degrees below average and obviously a little bit more in texas that's going to sweep east but it's going to weaken a little bit but i still think you're going to have a few degrees below average with the system for the east coast we'll look at this in a second it's what i call the model sanity test we can actually measure how confident the models are and we'll look at that in a second but as we get towards the 20 uh, second now this thing starts to go linear it's not in a it's not a closed wave anymore it's actually open so these height lines are not closed off which means the system's going to be kind of spread out it's not going to have that comma head look when you see these this kind of feature in the upper levels but it's going to be kind of really spread out like a cold front just a temperature gradient essentially there's a lot of positive vorticity advection but it's flat so it's just going to be kind of a a cold to warm scenario with a line of rain out ahead of it the way this upper level pattern looks now if you look at this on the surface you can see that you got a nice warm front 
cold front, so you got your uh, your temperature gradient, warm over here, cold over here. There's really no wraparound comma head, and that's going to limit the snow potential a bit with that flat look in the in the upper levels I was talking about, the vorticity. You really want more curving, and you want you want it to close off, and that's not really quite happening. But the European computer model is a much different story. Either way, going to slam the East Coast with pl plenty of uh, moisture and rain. And uh, as we uh, look at the European computer model, speaking of which, it's a much different story, and it's very powerful. 964. This thing the other day had a 954 millibar low pressure system, which is absolutely astronomically low, which would indicate, you know, I would say definitely some type of blizzard uh, for southern Canada, maybe some wraparound snow in the northern plains. That's why I am keeping this area under the gun for at least some light wraparound snow up here. Uh, definitely got to watch this. We'll make some updates as this gets closer. But the European computer model has been pretty consistent with really just hyper driving this low pressure system as it hits towards the Midwest and into Canada. It just bombs out like crazy. But the GFS says a much different story. The GFS has actually done pretty well this winter so far. So just not 100% the Euro is going to be uh, right on this one, but we'll have to watch it. Either way, decent storm system going to be tracking into the the uh, the east coast. The biggest question is, will it be snow up here in the northern U.S.? Probably a little bit of a pocket out here in the west part of Nebraska and uh, northeast Colorado. Now, as we head towards the 23rd, you can see this positive vorticity vection. Extremely uh, impressive there. Lots of spin lift in the atmosphere for uh, for you know a decent storm. The issue is it's not closed off. Again, you want these black lines that kind of close off and look circular like that and it's really not happening so that's you're not going to get quite of a, a lot of wrapping you're just going to get this long temperature gradient with precipitation on each side but it's very impressive so there's gonna be a lot of lift there's your temperatures anomalies slightly below average again if you had more wrapping you might be able to pull more cold air down but overall just kind of slightly below average few degrees and then you're at Precipitation, this is going to be uh, from the, I believe, uh, 19th through the 21st, around 1 a.m. You know, this is going to change a little bit, and the, and the GFS has gone back and forth, but generally a quarter inch to maybe an inch or so in the green and blue purple areas right there. So, yeah, a little bit, and then as we head towards the uh, 23rd, as you head towards the east coast, you can see that precipitation blow up quite a bit. I mean, that's some pretty good precipitation there. One to three inches. You know, some areas in here, maybe three inches or so. East coast, one to two inches. So good drenching rainfall. Now, this pattern is important because this could translate into the winter with uh, you know winter storms. Snowfall by the GFS indicating a swath of one to six inches in this area. You get these little bubble looks like this that usually means there is uncertainty because this look kind of indicates that there's little tiny pockets of cold air and then warmer all around it so that's going to change quite a bit when you get that nebulous look i wouldn't put too much stock in it it's the signal here that snow's falling is what matters here so we can kind of warn that there could be an elevated snow risk for this area and it's been pretty consistent at least for northwest colorado so i would definitely put this area under the gun for a potential snow uh, event as we head towards Thursday or, or uh, midweek around the 22nd. So, you know, elevated risk, but overall I think the rain threat's a little bit higher, but we'll put like, you know, a 40% chance of, of a snow event there and a little bit higher in northwest Colorado. So definitely something to watch. Now, how confident are the models? We'll look at that real quick. This is kind of the, uh, the GFS 540 line. That 540 line we were talking about, or actually uh, 540 uh, and then uh, 582 height lines, and you can see when these are close together, there's more confidence in the model. So this is right now as the model's initialized. But as we get towards the storm event, watch what happens. It starts to spread out. It's pretty confident actually in the southern U.S., but the northern part, there's a lot of uncertainty. And I think there, you know, when you look at the GFS, there's a lot of uncertainty if that northern branch that I was going to talk about was going to happen or not. And as you can see, we'll go back to that. 
Uh, let's see. We'll go down a frame. I think that's... The uncertainty probably is going to lie up here. Uh, the way the GFS has been handling things. It's been pretty consistent for the southern part of the United States. This northern half of the United States, there's a lot of consistency. Inconsistency and a little bit less confident uh, in the models. And, and that's why I am uh, definitely keeping this area under watch again. In this area as well, under watch for snow. It's been flipping back and forth. It's been flipping with the potential for the low pressure system. But either way, I think for the east coast, particularly the, the central plains, there's definitely going to be a decent uh, event. It's the northern part over here, maybe extending out to over here, that there's a little bit more uncertainty. But that's a little tool we use to diagnose these models. Now, a little bonus section here at the end, so that's going to be our, our general update. Now, as we go towards the end of this video, let's look at the 26th now. There's a pattern change, and I've been talking about this, that's really going to start taking hold and obviously the storm we were talking about is the first sign of it. You're going to get some ridging in the west and troughing in the east. And that's really going to uptick the uh, storm pattern and really cold air for the eastern half of the United States, particularly in that region right there. That's the uh, general pattern that I think is going to set up more often than not this winter. Not always going to look like that. But you're starting to see this a little bit more and more often now. So I thought that was kind of interesting. And then you can see this is around the 26th and potentially powerful uh, nor'easter right there. Obviously, this is getting far out. But look at that nice little snowstorm in the backside. This is kind of something fun to watch. We'll make an update on this video. So subscribe and stay tuned if you haven't already. And we'll definitely make an update this potential storm out here. Obviously, it's going to change a lot. But the general look, that pattern, will support a storm. It might not be on the 26th like this thing says. But that pattern is ripe for nor'easters and stuff like that. So, again, reviewing my temperature outlook for the winter and uh, precipitation or snowfall outlook. You know, generally, that's what I was talking about, that general pattern there. And you can see above average snowfall amounts and uh, below average temperatures for that region. Again, this is going to change. I'm going to have an update on this as well. So subscribe and stay tuned for that. I think I'm going to move things just a tad. But we will see on that. So go ahead and subscribe if you like these types of videos. Send in your pictures and uh, videos if you want them showcased. We'll have some shows on the channel that showcase your awesome capture. So if you're interested in that, submit some of those. Subscribe, hit those bell notifications because we do go live. Smash that thumbs up button. And uh, check out my winter forecast. I posted it there. Comment below in the comments section. Hope you're having a great day. Hope you enjoyed the video and we'll see you soon.